Friends, my, name. <laughs> my name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. You can call me Captain Donger. Tonight, it's Whoop Wednesday. We're going to be testing uh, 1S versus 2S on 75 millimeter whoops. We've also got mail time. More 1404s have arrived for testing. Uh, in the chat, Dauntless FPV was first, Geo Fairbanks was next, Dan Richmond, June Loco, CH3F1, Michael Blades, 
FPV Trucker, Remy Tim, Droney Droid, Alpha Sloth, G, we already called him FPV Trucker again, Frank Nicholas, and CMYK FPV, and Aber the Ham. What's up, friends? I hope I didn't miss anybody. I was trying to skip uh, and not repeat people. What else, what else do I have to tell you? Uh, this is my full-time job. If you would like me to keep doing this full-time, I need everybody's help. I need everybody to kick in a dollar or two or a click or two. Uh, head on over to CIDFPV.com and just click some buttons, whatever you want. Just randomly close your eyes and click stuff. That'll work. Uh, my Patreon is the best way to support me. For as little as $3 a month, you can get into my Patreon uh, that's gonna give you email notifications when I do live stream because I don't have any kind of like a formal schedule uh, It's also gonna get you access to a whole bunch of really good articles that I've written on motor heat troubleshooting motor heat Filter tuning and PID tuning the easy way like actually easy like any of you guys can do it or girls um, And a bunch of other really good stuff the patreon is well worth three dollars a month That's only ten cents a day. Come on. You know, you got ten cents a day for your gangly buddy CIDFPV. Uh, YouTube and Instagram, keep up with me over there. Uh, Etsy, there's a whole bunch of stickers and some random hardware that might help you out in your builds. Uh, over on Fiverr, I'm doing flight instruction, flight coaching. If you like the way that I flew back in 2019, um, I'm even better now and I can help you fly like that. Um, uh, coaching and instruction is really big like everywhere else right in motorsports in school everywhere like the fact that we've got teachers people that have spent a ton of time to get really good at something and then they distill that knowledge down uh, works really well right so why wouldn't it work in FPV it does the the folks that uh, have hired me over on Fiverr to help them fly a little bit better are all like I can watch them get better during the half an hour or hour long session and when you fly better you feel better right it's it's good to go out and and shred like you know when you flew really good on that day and it feels really good so I can help you get that good feeling more often what do you think of that uh, also if you need some help planning your builds or tuning I can also help you out with that over on Fiverr I've got a bunch of t-shirts and mugs and sweatshirts over on Teespring uh, I've got a little store here on FPV Exchange I'll show you in a second. If you want to support me but you don't want to spend any money, here's the best way to do it. These are affiliate links. If you or anybody you know is ever doing an order on FPV Cycle, Amazon, Get FPV, Oh My God, FPV Crate, Banggood, Camera Butter, AliExpress, all you or that person need to do is hit my affiliate link before you check out at any point and I'll get one to 6% of your order. It's super helpful, it's free money. Um, over on FPV Exchange, where you should be signed up, if you're not signed up for FPV Exchange, you're, mix you're missing out. Um, this is a whole bunch of the stickers that I've got. FPV Exchange queries a bunch of other retail websites and brings all the prices in one so that you can price shop really, really early. Uh, really, really easily, rather. Uh, you can also sell things directly on FPV Exchange. Uh, these stick ends, these t-shirts here, this 3B Hobby Motor, these are all things that I'm selling used. And what's really cool about it on FPV Exchange is when you do that, it puts you on the same page as Newbie Drone and Banggood and RDQ and Pyro Drone and all the big shops. So it's really the best way to sell stuff because when people are on FPV Exchange doing like some shopping, shopping around for prices and stock status, they're gonna see you at the top of the list because you're gonna be selling your stuff for the least amount of money. And they're gonna buy it from you. So do it. Go over to FPV Exchange, get signed up. They are huge supporters of me and this channel. I probably wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. Support the people that support the people that you watch. Turbo Shill over. Let's do a little bit of... That is Mighty Car Mod's little uh, thing. I shamelessly stole it from them. Hopefully it's so short that they don't find out about it, but if they do, Mighty Car Mods, I love you guys. I've watched you for the last 10 years. Um, all of you guys in the chat should go subscribe to Mighty Car Mods. They're, even if you don't like cars, they're just two really awesome dudes that'll make you laugh, and you'll learn a little bit about cars while you're at it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Oh God, let's not have the box that way. Vifly Short Saver 2, this is for the giveaways. 
So it goes over there in the giveaway closet. Um, Vifly storage safe. This is for me. Uh, so the other really cool thing that Vifly makes is this little, uh, it's just a tiny little discharger. And um, I have the XT60 version, uh, and I needed to get my order up above free shipping. So I got the XT30 version as well for a couple of dollars. All this is, is a tiny little heat sink and a little chip on there that makes sure that it doesn't over discharge your batteries. Um, because that's all it is, is a discharger. So when you come home uh, and you haven't flown all your batteries, you plug the battery into this, the little heat sink warms up, uh, there's a little light on here, and it discharges your battery down to storage voltage. Really, really handy. It takes forever because it's a tiny little heat sink, but, you know, what are you in such a rush for? Chill the fuck out! Relax! It's all good. You ain't gotta be in a hurry. I don't know. And, uh, reminder, please charge battery in good heat dissipation condition. Fair enough. Vifly says thank you for purchasing a Vifly product. You're welcome. Thank you for making excellent products, Vifly. Uh, your short saver is the only one that actually works. Uh, I got a battery. It's a GNB 700 mAh. Uh, the main thing I was curious about is the size. And it's a little longer than I was hoping. Uh, this is a 4S 700 mAh 100 to 200 C. That's ambitious. Uh, I'm sure that it's not that actual C rating, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, this'll be... Uh, I'll try this on the Cinesplor to see how lightweight we can get the Cinesplor. Uh, but mainly this is going to be like a, a, a longer running battery for the rip squeaks. Uh, let's see what it weighs. I'm actually really curious as to what this thing weighs. It, it probably weighs a little bit less than a 4S850. I wonder why. 86.3. That seems a little heavy. 86.3. What? Hold on. Let me grab a, uh, a 4S 850. For comparison. Uh, what's this? Is this a 4S 850? It is. This is a beta FPV 4S 850. 86 point, call it 86 and a half. Oh, okay, no, 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 the 4S 850s are 100 grams, that's what it is. Okay, yeah, so it weighs exactly what uh, what we would expect it to weigh. Um, that is a, a really high advertised C rating. I'm sure it, it won't actually deliver that much power, but usually when the C ratings are higher, especially within the same brand of battery, that means you are gonna get a little bit lower of an internal resistance and it is gonna hit a little bit harder. Um, so yeah, and look, it's a yellow label. I think the, the, on, the, on the big batteries, the yellow label means that there's no uh, protective piece in here, uh, and they're a little bit lighter weight. So uh, yeah, uh, some hardware for Patrick. Patrick is going in hard on some rip squeak builds. Uh, so I'll put that aside for him. Actually, no, I will throw that out on the couch. I can't believe that just landed on the top of the couch. That's ridiculous. Uh, for him, and it would appear that they have forgotten one of the motors, because there's supposed to be... I thought there were supposed to be three different 1404s in here. Uh, nope. Just two. X Nova and T Motor. Alright, well, whatever. None of the 1404 testing matters anymore because that iFlight 1504 was so goddamn brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I, I got all these 1404s for no real reason. Um, but that's okay. It's for the it's for science, really. Uh, let's open the T motor first and get the disappointment out of the way. <laughs> uh, so, somebody sent me a video of uh, this T motor 1404 and them spinning it by hand. Well, they didn't send me the video, they just posted the video and I saw it. Uh, and I could tell that it was ultra, ultra, ultra notchy. Uh, so let's just, yeah, let's just get the disappointment over with here. Get out of there, little fella. Okay, comes with T-Motor stickers and some extra hardware and all that good stuff like they always put in there thingies. 
Uh, oh, hey, if uh, if you want to talk directly to me in the chat, all you got to do is type CADFPV. If you type anybody's name into the chat for that person, their name will light up an orange. Here's what it looks like. All these people have typed CADFPV and it lights up an orange. So if you want to talk sp directly to someone in the chat, type their name. Don't spell it wrong because then it won't work. You can put an at in front of it, but you don't have to. Uh, just spell their name right and it'll light up orange in their chat. Uh, Geo Fairbank says, nice landing. Thanks, dude. CMYK says, hello, good sir. Abraham says, oi. Uh, Journey Droid says, Captain Donger. Uh, Frank Nicholas dropping the link. And, uh, Remy Tim dropping the link to my website. Thank you, guys. And to the link tree. Dalton is in the house. He says, I'm still working on your link. I didn't forget about you. Very cool. Thank you, Dalton. Um, no huge hurry, man. It's all good. It's, uh, it's worth the wait. Um, Dalton works at, uh, uh, Dalton is kind of e-famous for making the little floater motors, and, uh, now he's working over at Newbie Drone, uh, and he's gonna get me an affiliate link for Newbie Drone, so I can add that to the list. Uh, June Loco says, tell the epic trick you did on Rampage two years ago, that's when I joined the collective. Did I do an epic trick at Rampage? I don't remember doing. I don't remember doing something nuts. Be be more specific, June Loco. I, I don't remember what what did I do at Rampage. I'll, I'll pull up the footage. Whatever. Uh, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, 05 Alabama saying hello. Ricardo Ferrari says just saw a YouTube video. Kebab told me to use. Uh, Kebab told me to use tape on my quad between the top arms, uh, middle plate. Apparently improved resonance issues. Have you ever tried this? Thanks. Uh, I have not tried it. Uh, by doing that, it removes. It, it makes removing the arms to swap the arms out a lot more difficult. Um, and I don't have any resonance problems on my glides. They all fly absolutely fine. So I don't really have any use to do it. Um, I do have the uh, vibration damping grease that Chris Rosser uh, has been working on in my Amazon shopping cart. And I am doing an Amazon order sooner than later. Um, so I will be trying the grease because with the grease there's really no negative to doing it other than like it could be a little messy but i mean who gives a shit like we're all fucking adults here right like who cares um so yeah i am going to try the grease thing but the the electric tape thing like it's it's the 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 negatives it doesn't make a huge difference i don't have any problems um so i'm not going to take the negatives uh Right, like there, there's, there's no reason for me to take any negatives. With, with the grease, there really isn't any negatives, um, so I'm willing to do it. But with the, um, yeah, with the electric tape, it's just, I, I, I yeah, I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, but it does work. Uh, there are multiple people that have done it, and Black Box very clearly shows that it does work. So, um, if you don't crash your your glide a lot or pro it'll probably work on damn near any frame um if you don't crash a lot and have to swap arms a lot then the uh the electric tape is probably totally fine for you to do uh great question ricardo uh june loco says that's so 2019 no it's not uh electric tape under the motors is 2019 in between the top uh, in between your bottom plate and your arms that's 2021 uh do, 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 do. Paul Murphy says, do you have the Emacs Eco 1404 coming? Those are the ones I used on uh, Baby Hawk 2. They seem sweet. Uh, I do not, Paul. I actually ran those motors on my Tiny Trainer for a little while, so I know all about them. Uh, they are not too notchy, but they're also not smooth. They're somewhere in between. Uh, the problem that I had with them is that they're incredibly fragile. Um, every single, not every single, but any crash with any amount of momentum completely destroyed the stator base. Um, they must have used like a really low quality metal, I'm thinking, for those. Um, so yeah, the Emacs Eco 1404s, I can't really recommend. They were just very, very, very fragile. Uh, and that's really a, a deal breaker for me. Uh, June Loco says, power looping the double tables. Oh, okay, so that wasn't Rampage, that was uh, Quad Camp, uh, Quad Camp Atlanta. So if you go to my channel, if you just click Ciotti FPV down here, uh, and you go to my channel, that video will actually automatically play. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a fun video. And then uh, Joshua Bardwell actually has his own version of that video that he made called uh, The Most Epic 
I think it's called the most epic Matty flip I ever I've ever seen happened at Quad Camp or something like that. Um, so yeah, you can check out both sides of that story, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I'm just pulling out the staples of the X Nova. Uh, so here's the T Motor 1404, and it's actually not that bad. Um, it's it's definitely notchy. Like it's it's definitely more notchy than uh, than what I would want. But it is 4,600 kV, so it is kind of a good kV, and it is 9x9 motor mount base. Um, and T-Motor does make really good quality motors, so um, I, don't, I don't think I would want to have this on a rig that's carrying an HD camera. Um, but it might not actually be the end of the world. Let me, let me grab the other 1404s uh, that I've ordered here, and we will compare all of them and I'll, I'll see if I can give you guys like a a most notchy to least notchy um, scale for lack of a better term well here's actually the here's actually an, an Emacs uh, Eco 1404 I think this is one of the ones that exploded yeah this is one of the ones that exploded um, I think I went through like three of the damn things pretty quickly um, uh, so yeah, I can't really, I cannot recommend those at all, um, because of the fragility, unless you don't crash. If you don't crash, they're going to be totally fine. What I do really like about the Emacs Ecos is that they make them in 6,000 kV, and that's kind of rare. Um, so if you don't crash much, and you need that higher kV, like let's say you wanted to run them on 3S, uh, then they would be an okay choice. Um... But for me, they're, uh, yeah, they were no good. And I even have an iFlight Zing 1404. Look at that. Okay, cool. So I think that's all the 1404s I have, right? Uh, yeah, looks like it. Put this back in here. And, okay, cool. This is my one of every motor box. Uh, if I ever need to get an order over the free shipping number, I'll just buy one of as many motors as I have to, um, just motors that I don't have. And then I can uh, weigh them and just kind of check out the construction and, and yeah, just kind of check them out. So, uh, let's look at the last 1404 though. The only other 1404 that I, that I don't think I have at this point is the GEP RC 1404. Uh, Race Day Quads is the only site that sells those uh, here in the U.S. Um, and I typically don't order from Race Day Quads because their shipping is pretty slow and their customer service is not all that great. Um, and they don't let anybody with less than 10,000 subscribers join their affiliate program. Um, so, yeah, I don't do orders there too often, but whenever I have to do an order there, I will pick up that Gep RC so I can complete the collection of all the, pretty much all the 1404s. Uh, DJ CJX says, hey man, been a hot minute, popping them in to say hi, it's been super busy, haven't been able to get out uh, and fly, been listening to the audio from the streams, keep it up man. Uh, hey, DJ, thanks for the reminder, that's another thing that you get by joining my Patreon, you get audio versions of most of these live streams, so that if you can't watch them, you can listen to them uh, just like a podcast. Uh, which is basically kind of what I'm doing here, right? Is a podcast with the camera pointed at me. Um, uh, so yeah, that's probably worth 10 cents a day uh, because I tend to give out a lot of really good info on these streams. Uh, so being able to listen to it, a lot of people are uh, kind of in love with. So yeah, do that. Hold on, let me turn the uh, the air conditioning on a little bit lower. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, here the the T motor uh, seems a little notchy, but we're gonna we're gonna compare it in a second. Here is the X Nova. Uh, please be smooth, X Nova. Please be smooth. Your 1804s are smooth. Nope, very notchy. Uh, more notchy than the T motor. Okay, so let's do a notchiness battle, a 1404 notchiness battle, and I'll even do it over here. Oh boy, this this camera is all kinds of fucked up. Here, hold on. Uh, oh boy. Oh god. Okay. 
point this up a little bit. Give you guys as, as little crotch as possible, which I'm sure you'll appreciate. Okay, so here's all the 1404s. We've got the new Zing, the old Zing, the Dave C made by uh, Flywoo. Uh, we've got the new Brother Hobby 1404. We've got the uh, Happy Model. We've got the X Nova. Hold on, let me tie these wires in a little, in a little knot here. You better not forget to tie those wires in a knot. Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for that. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, the T Motor and the Emacs 1404. So, we're gonna order these from least to most notchy, or vice versa. Uh, wow, so this is the new Zing. This one's actually looking pretty good, okay? Looking pretty good. Uh, this is the old Zing. Okay, more notchy. Uh, what do you guys want? More notchy or less? So you guys are looking at the right, so the right side should be more notchy. So that's my left. Okay, so so far this is the most notchy. Uh, well, let me just double check. Let me just double check. All right. Yeah, 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 totally, totally, totally more notchy. Okay, and then we've got the Dave C. Ooh, that one's nice, that one's nice and smooth. That one's a little smoother than, uh, still got some notch to it, but a little smoother than the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a little smoother than the iFlate, okay, cool. And then we've got the new Brother Hobby. Ooh, that's got some notchiness to it there. That's a coggy bastard. Okay, I think that's more, yeah, yeah, more notchy than that. More coggy, but less than the iFlate, maybe. No, it's actually worse. It's the worst yet. Worst one yet. Happy model. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Happy model. Uh, you, you literally shouldn't have uh, because it's just going to be a nightmare. X Nova. Oh, that's pretty notchy compared to the other ones. Oh, boy. That's pretty nasty. Oh yeah, it's worse than the Zing for sure. Let's see if it's worse than the Brother Hobby. Oh, it is. Oh, X Nova, gross. What are you fucking doing? Not as bad as the Happy Model though. The Happy Model takes the cake for being the dumbest. Uh, T Motor. Oh wow, the T Motor's looking a lot better now that I'm I'm spinning all these other ones. Uh, let me. Not this wire up here real quick. Okay. Oh man, the T-motor is actually looking pretty good at this point. Mm, I think it is a little bit worse than the, than the Zing. Yeah, it is. It's a little worse than the Zing, uh, the new Zing. Let's see where it's at compared to the old Zing. It's a little smoother, okay, yeah, so it goes right there. And then the Emacs 1404, th this one's hard to tell because it's 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 banged to hell, so it only spins a little bit. Um, but it is actually somewhat smooth. It's really a shame that it's they're so fragile. Um, okay, yeah, it's a little more smooth than this. It's not as smooth as this. So there it is. There's the final order. Uh, let's get some weights on these. What do you say? Let me uh, let me cut these let me cut these motor wires down all to the same length, and then we'll get some weights on these uh, because that shit's important. And the the advertised weights are never right. Uh, thing goes there. That goes there. Uh, yeah. When when you look at the, a motor weight on a website. Keep in mind that it's probably wrong. Uh, they they really don't um, they really don't do a good job of uh, giving the right the right weight numbers on the website. It's it's really frustrating. 
Uh, I'm just making sure that I'm cutting these motor wires to the right length. I'm going to cut them all the same length as this uh, NIN Dave C motor. I think the problem with this Dave C motor is, uh, don't quote me on this, but I, I don't think they make it in a high enough KV. Uh, what KV is this? Uh, that's not true. They make it in 4850 because this one's a 4850. I think what it is is it's hard to find it in the 4850 KV maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as long as this Flywoo Dave C NIN 1404 version 2, as long as this isn't fragile, which I'm not going to be able to find out for you guys because I'm not going to buy three more of them. Um, as long as it's not fragile, it's the king of the 1404s, um, just because it's the smoothest, and uh, motor cogginess is a really big deal, and it's a really big problem, and if these manufacturers don't start getting their heads out of their asses and producing smoother running motors, I'm going to drive to their homes and kill their entire families. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope you don't. I hope you don't because then you would be as demented as I am. And nobody wants that, man. Nobody wants Nobody wants more crazy people in the world. There's enough of us already. All right, last one. I hate to do it, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut this motor wire off even though it has this connector on it. And then I think I need to shorten up the wires on one of these. I think I looked at one of these and the uh, the motor wires were a little too long. Oh, it felt dirty to do that. It felt actually physically painful. Uh, I think it was this zing. Yeah, it's this zing that uh, the motor wires are a little too long. Got to make sure it's a fair fight, you know what I mean? Probably can't even buy this zing anymore, but whatever. For science! Although it's really not science. Uh, so there's your lineup, boys and girls. If you were ever wondering uh, how notchy each, how coggy each of the 1404s is in comparison, this is the smoothest and this is the worst. From smoothest to worst, uh, Flywoo NIN 1404 4850 KV version 2. Uh, Emax Eco, the new uh, iFlight Zing 2, T Motor 1404, the old school Zing 1404, uh, the new Brother Hobby, green and gold, the X Nova 1404, and then dead last, the Happy Model 1404 with the most ridiculously thin motor wires I've ever seen. Um, so there you guys go. Let's get some weights. I'm just gonna leave the, the, the thing pointed at you guys so that you can read the weights. I think you'll be able to see it. Now you'll definitely be able to see it. Uh, Dave C, 9.4. Emacs Eco, 8.6. Seven. Uh, Zing 2, 8.9. T Motor, 8.0. Oh, T Motor, way to go. Uh, the old Zing, 8.7. Brother Hobby Green and Gold, 8.1. Eight point six, and Happy Model. Oh my God, seven point seven. Jesus. Um, so there you have it. There are all the weights of all the fourteen oh fours that I've got. I think I'm only missing one or two. The Gep RC I'm definitely missing from this roundup, and I'm probably missing uh, at least one other. Um, but hey, here's the majority of them. Uh, what I can tell you is that they all, hold on, 
I'm gonna get the caliper out for this because there's a chance that this Dave C one is not a two millimeter motor shaft. And if it's not a two millimeter motor shaft, nobody should buy it. Unless, I guess you never crash, but let's be honest, you're gonna crash at some point. Um, if that only has a 1.5 millimeter motor shaft, they should be beaten with sticks. That is unforgivable. It might just be like an optical, optical illusion. I certainly hope that it is. Okay, now it's two millimeter. Yeah, so they all have two millimeter motor shafts uh, down below the bell, which is where the which is where it's important. That's where the motor shafts all bend. Um, up above the bell, they've all got uh, 1.5. They have to because that's what the the center diameter of, of the T-mount propellers is, 1.5. Uh, but yeah, down below the bell, these guys all have two millimeter motor shafts. So realistically, none of these guys are gonna be more durable than the other um, because the motor bell is the thing that bends before anything else. You can, you can make, uh, I'm sorry, the motor shaft is what bends and, and kills these motors. You can make the motor bell one piece, two piece, a hundred piece. You can make it out of unobtainium. It doesn't matter. The the motor shaft is going to bend a hundred percent of the time in crashes. Um, so yeah, realistically, none of these are going to be any more durable uh, than the rest, unless one of these manufacturers is using a better quality metal for the motor shaft itself. Uh, but that's kind of impossible to tell because they don't really give you any specs that are, are meaningful. They all just say, you know, aluminum alloy, boo! Like, um, so yeah, uh, realistically, there's not gonna be a durability, a, a difference in durability between these. Um, so you might as well go with the one that runs the smoothest, which is the Flywoo, oh God, I almost threw up. The Flywoo Dave C. Uh, NIN 1404 version 2 and while you're at it get it in the 4850 kV uh, because if that's too much kV you can just motor scale it down and you're gonna be good to go if you want to run 3s uh, then you're pretty much trapped into getting the Emacs eco and just dealing with the fact that it's not very durable look at the look what happened to the stator base on this like this, this is what I'm saying like this is not that hard of a crash and the stator base just absolutely ate itself. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to know about these motors before I put them away forever? Uh, June Loco says, Gem Fan Hobby is live on Instagram. That's, I, I always forget that. They, they do their live streams on Wednesday nights. I need to start doing my, um, I need to start doing my live streams here earlier so I don't overlap them. Um, hmm. Kevin Smith says, your Amazon shopping cart, did you use your affiliate link? You know, I didn't. <laughs> so thank you for the reminder. Um, I'm going to do that right now. And all right, now we're good to go. Let me just let it load the rest of the way. Look, you can even see it. You can even see what it's doing. It's got my my little info right there. Oh, farts. That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Um, thank you for the reminder, Kevin Smith. What is happening? Why does everything keep resizing? Relax. Internet, relax. Uh, Chris Ferret says, straight out of rehab, feeling fucking awesome. Congratulations. Chris, you've been in there for a couple weeks, right? Good to have you out. Uh, June Loco said, oh, we got that. Uh, FP Vian says, what would cause uncontrolled D-term oscillations during fast pitch flips? Problem gets worse on R-Line 1050 V4 versus V1. I feel like I've tried everything, including building a new glide. Uh, how do you know that it's D-term oscillations, FP Vian? Are you uh, black boxing it? Um, June Loco says, damn, that was aggressive. 
Random FPV says, Ciadi FPV's shaft is bent. Uh, Random FPV says, don't barf. Jordan Woods with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Jordan. He says, thanks for the great content. I was finally able to build my first whoop. It's been hard for me to find useful info on anything else, on anything that's not a five inch freestyle rig. Uh, you're certainly welcome, Jordan. Keep the questions coming uh, when you have them. And uh, yeah, we'll make sure that you're up in the air, locked in, tunes, ready to go. Uh, Bob Noxus says, what's man? What's up, chat? How are my hikers today? What's up, Bob Noxious? How are you, brother? Uh, yeah, FPV, and tell me more, man. Tell me, uh, I'm, I'm very curious as to how you know that it's determ oscillations. Um, usually, I mean, if it's determ oscillations, all you gotta do is drop the determ down, and, and that's gonna take care of it. Many, many black box logs. Yeah, so I mean, all you need to do is drop the determ down, and, and that's gonna take care of that. Um, uh, you said it's during fast pitch flips so if it's during if it's only on the pitch axis usually what that means is that either you've got too much d-term on the pitch axis or uh you've got a bad gyro that when the gyros start to shit the bed they will typically fail on one axis versus the other um so if you've used that same flight controller in both, it sounds like you've got two rigs now that are doing it. If you've been using that same flight controller, I would, um, yeah, get rid of that flight controller, get it, put a fresh one in, and I'll bet you the problem goes away. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the, the cure for D-term oscillations are just less D-term. Um, if you, if the tune is going to be shitty once you do that, um, the solution is potentially more filtering. Or, more often than that, uh, it's a mechanical issue. Um, you've got, like, arms that are delaminating or partially broken, uh, screws somewhere that are not tight, uh, a flight controller that's not properly soft-mounted. Um, I actually have an article on, uh, a post, rather, that I wrote on my Patreon called Troubleshooting Motor Heat. Um, Oscillations are the same root cause as motor heat. It's basically too many vibrations getting into the gyro. Um, so if you hit my uh, Patreon and you click on the top, uh, Tech Talk, Tech Talk will give you all of the posts that I've written with uh, surrounding technical stuff. And the very last one, you're gonna have to scroll all the way down, hit load more, scroll all the way down. The very last one is like troubleshooting motor heat and it just goes through each and every different thing that can possibly cause motor heat. Um, so I would just work my way through that list. Um, if that still doesn't fix it, um, I give you a bunch of other ideas here. Uh, so yeah, there you go, man. Um, no more questions on the 1404s, right? I'm gonna put them away. They're, I mean, the weight and the, and the cogginess are really the two big things that matter. Um, because, yeah, they're kind of the deal breakers. What's up, Skippy? Skippy is Experimental RC. He has changed his name. Uh, so, I'm actually not going to buy more of any of these because that iFlight 1505 is so good. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually going to put all of these away and they're going to kind of stay away. Uh, well... Let me do this though. Let, let me get a let me get a weight. So let's compare the uh, the iFlight 1504 to the oh oh oh. Let's also compare the the cogginess of these. So this is the iFlight 1504 that I'm just absolutely so excited about, uh, and then this is the least coggy of the 1404s. So first and foremost, let's compare. Uh, the amount of notch that each one of these little fellas has. My God, the iFlight is so smooth. <laughs> the iFlight wins, I can already tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is gonna run smoother and produce less jello. Let's see what the weight difference is. Might be, might be a pretty significant weight difference because the iFlight motors have this big fucking egg-shaped bell that tends to be really, really heavy. Uh, so 10 and a half versus nine and a half. 
So I will absolutely take a one gram weight penalty for a 1504 versus a 1404, especially a 1504 that's smoother than the 1404. Oh, and look at that. This, uh, okay, so I have to change my, uh, my answer. If you're gonna buy a 1404, unless your frame supports 12 by 12 mounting, which is stupid, um, yeah, that's the only reason to get this flywoo. Um, the, uh, the, the Emax Eco is nine by nine, which is good, but if you're gonna crash a lot, you should keep going up the ladder and until you hit the, was it the T-Motor or was it the Zing 2? Man, the Zing 2 is a heavy ass bastard though. Oh yeah, the Zing 2 is definitely less notchy though. Uh, that's a tough one. Well, I mean, these two are both nine by nine, so they're the next. Realistically, this is the motor that you should be buying. If, if you think you want a 1404, you actually don't. You want this 1504. But if you're absolutely hell-bent on 1404s, let me see real quick. Eight grams for the T-Motor. 8.8 .8 for the Zing 2. Uh, 8.9 for the Zing 2. Uh, that's a tough one. I think I would actually go with the T-Motor, which is a little bit notchier. Um, but yeah, there you go. If you're okay with a little bit of extra weight, Zing 2, you're gonna get a little bit more smoothness out of it. If you want a little bit lighter weight, uh, 1404. But realistically, you should be getting the iFlight 1505 because it's gonna fucking demolish all these other motors. Uh, the One of the big selling points of 9x9 versus 12x12 is that 9x9 motors, you can then use the GEP RC 9x9 nine nine prop guards. And I didn't show them on the other live stream where we talked about the 1404s, so I'm gonna show them now. And I'm actually just gonna leave one of them out because I've been talking about them a lot lately. Um, yeah, so these guys are 9x9 nine nine mount only. You could probably, you could probably open these holes up and slot these holes out to 12 by 12, but my God, would that come close to the end of the plastic here? And trying to do that perfectly even on all four would be a bitch, and you need this to be perfectly centered. Um, so yeah, that would be tough to, to slot this thing out. Um, there are enough nine by nine options, like this 1504 and like these two guys here, even the Emacs Eco, if you don't crash a lot, uh, there are enough 9x9 nine nine options where this prop guard uh, is very usable. And I've, I've never been as impressed by a prop guard as I am with this. It is so goddamn strong. Like, like I'm really strong. Like, that, that, was a, that was all I had. That was my left hand, right? So my right hand. I could probably keep going and, and maybe collapse this thing, but, like, nope. I actually can't. I'm not super strong, but um, this is ridiculous. They rolled the uh, they rolled the edge over. See the edge there? They rolled it over, and it really gives it a bunch of strength. And then they've got these little uh, these little supports here, every few, and then this is all rolled over here and like kind of doubled up. Uh, this this is incredible, man. This prop. Uh, guard is really staggeringly good uh, and yeah man having a rig that you can put guard having a micro that you can then put guards on and fly it like a Cinewoop that's dope like that that's a that's a big deal that that's a really uh, yeah that really makes a micro into a, a fucking weapon like a weapon that you can use for a lot of different stuff you can use it for like cinematic stuff flying around people um, with with this motor this thing is gonna make plenty of thrust to pick up an insta 360 go or the, even the go 2 or even a naked GoPro um, it really turns a micro into something that you can get a lot of use out of um, which is very very cool so yeah, Zing 1504, boys and girls, absolute pog champion, as the gamers would say, I think.
Isn't that, isn't that how you use that word? Am I cool now? Is it, it, am I cooler now that I said a thing that, that gamer people say? Does that, is that what you have to do to be cool? Because, I mean, they seem to do that. They just, they just say things that each other say. And that, and I, and I think that's what makes them cool, right? Isn't that how it works? I'm not making fun of anyone in particular. I'm just kind of poking fun at, uh, I don't know, everyone. <laughs> I try, I try to shit on everyone equally, I guess. Uh, Luke Beam says, do you think they'll fit on a tiny trainer uh, as long as you have the tiny trainer that's drilled 9 by 9 Absolutely. Um, absolutely. But, they're going to be a little... Uh, no, yeah, 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 you want them on a tiny trainer. They're, they're not so... I mean, tiny trainer is a very floppy uh, piece of carbon. That, that, that bottom piece of carbon is very... Um, it's very thin. It's it's two millimeter thick carbon, so of course it's going to be uh, a little wobbly. Uh, so you got to be careful on the tiny trainer. I, I would actually go with. Uh, was anybody paying attention to which one of these motors was the lightest? Well, I think the Happy model was the lightest, but fuck that thing. Um, I you know if I were building the tiny trainer, I think I would go with the T motor. I think I would go with the T motor fourteen oh four because. From what I remember, that was one of the lighter ones that was on the smoother end of the spectrum there from a minute ago. Um, uh, so yeah, because the, the tiny trainer, you're really going to want to keep the weight down. I don't, I don't really know if I would go with this big of a motor um, on on that little rig unless you need the extra power. If if you need the extra power, uh, then yeah, for sure. Uh, but I certainly didn't on. My, uh, I guess I kind of did. I went with the Emacs Eco 6000 KV on 3S with mine, um, and that was just about perfect. Uh, T-Bird bought it off me, and um, yeah, that was just about perfect. So take that with a with a grain of salt. But I fly it, uh, I fly freestyle, right? So I was building it for that. For racing, I don't think you want that much power. It's just going to annihilate the battery. Uh, Richard says, I get jello on my new 3-inch build at the high end of the throttle. Any insight into that? Uh, Richard, same kind of answer um, as I was given FPV in. Uh, check out uh, Tech Talk on my Patreon page. Scroll all the way down. Look at the motor, um, uh, the motor heat troubleshooting post that I wrote. Uh, that's going to walk you through all of the different things that can cause vibrations. Uh, outside of that, the... Uh, what motors do you have on it? Uh, if it's a motor that I've tested, I'll be able to tell you whether or not it's too coggy of a motor uh, because that's a, a very common thing to cause jello. Uh, Habboard says, Ciotti FPV ate a Tim and Eric fan. Are you a Tim and Eric fan? I don't even know who Tim and Eric are. I just binged Detroiters. It's Tim and a bunch of others based in a small agency. It's great. Uh, I haven't even heard of that, Habboard. Uh, do me a favor, shoot me a message. Uh, with what that's called and where I can find it, and I'll give it a I'll give it a watch. Uh, Skippy says that could be the problem if my Cinewhoop is slowly yawing to the left. Or no, he says what could be the problem if my Cinewhoop is slowly yawing to the left, uh, to the left if when I high a certain throttle position. Um, uh, that's an interesting problem, Skippy. Uh, slowly yawing to the left but only in a certain throttle position. That sounds really weird. Um, slowly yawing to the left, like constant, strikes me as a uh, as a, uh, a trim problem. Check the trims on your transmitter. Make sure that there's not like 0.5 left yaw trim. Uh, we don't really ever touch trim, so it's easy to like accidentally bump it and not notice it. Uh, also, check um check to make sure you're not doing it with your thumb by accident uh one way to do that is to go into the receiver tab and add a bunch of yaw deadband add like i don't know 10 points of yaw deadband or something like that and then see if it still does it um if you add a bunch of yaw deadband and it stops doing it that means that the problem is in the transmitter that means that either the trim in the transmitter is off or your gimbal could be failing, um, or you're just you're just using your thumb by accident and you're just pulling over into yaw. Um, 
that happens more often than you'd think. Uh, I, I get um, through the flight coaching and flight instruction that I do um, through my Fiverr page, or just if you guys want to message me and schedule it and PayPal me, um, I've gotten quest the question multiple times, hey, every time I do a power loop, I think I have it lined up, lined up, but then when I snap around to spot the landing, I'm off, and, I, and I, I'm always off to the left. And what that almost always is, is that when you go full throttle with the throttle stick, you accidentally pull to the left a little bit. It, it happens to pinchers more than thumbers, because when, when you pinch, you're, it's hard to push the throttle stick perfectly straight up. Uh, and there are solutions to that. But yeah, there's a couple of things you can check out. Drone Pilot is in the house. What's up, brother? Uh, he says, I'm try I've tried breaking those guards. My guess is they're pure nylon, and that's why they cannot tear or break. Yeah, I can't imagine breaking one of these ducts, not just, like, hitting it with a hammer. Uh, yeah, Richard, definitely let me know what motors are on that build that you're having the jello problems with. Uh, Benjamin West says, is Zing 1504 better than the Brother Hobby 1504.5? Um, after I can get my hands on three more of the Zing 1504s so I can actually fly them, Benjamin, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, it, it is a 9x9 mount base, and the Brother Hobby is a 12x12. So that's a big deal. Uh, being able to, to put my rip squeak onto these prop guards is a big deal so in that respect basically you know what's a good test is which one's more notchy uh, these eye flights are so smooth I, I'm I'm kind of uh, shell shocked a little bit at how smooth they are I, I would not be surprised if they're Smoother than the Brother Hobby VY. Ooh, we can weigh them too. I think we did that the other night, but we'll we'll revisit um, the weight difference between the two. Really good question, man. Uh, so the what what I don't like about the Brother Hobby 1504 is how hard it hits the battery. Um, it makes a ton of power. Uh, so on like a on like a heavier weight setup than the rip squeak on like a 240 250 gram setup um, I think I would rather have the the brother hobby 1504 and a half although there is a chance that the that the zing 1504 is more powerful the the size of the stator is only a part of the story it's a big part of the story but it is only part of the story um, so there's technically a chance that the zing is more powerful but I doubt it so the Brother Hobby 1504.5 is 10.2 grams, and the Zing is 10.3. Okay, so there's no weight difference between the two, um, the, which is kind of crazy because, because the Brother Hobby has, has more stator volume, so it should be a little bit uh, heavier, but it's not because Brother Hobby specifically made this motor and their 2004 to be lightweight. Um, the 9x9 versus 12x12 thing, that's a big deal. That's a really, really big deal. Um, other than that, they both look like they have nice thick magnets. Ooh, the Zing has a, uh, a little lip on the bottom of the bell to, to more positively hold the magnets in. Um, so there's a little advantage Zing there. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, they're probably both 14 magnets, but let me... Let me check real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yep, so they're both 14 magnet motors, so that's good. Um, the Brother Hobbies are a lot easier to get your hands on. So if you're building something now, the the Brother Hobby 1504 and a half is a great motor. I've I've flown them enough to to vouch for them and and I'm impressed by them. Uh, this Zing is probably really good as well, uh, but I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I, I think is is what I'm kind of getting at here. Um, but as long as the as long as the Zing as long as it makes good power. Uh, it's going to be my choice. Uh, I, I will actually 
If this makes good power, I will take the Brother Hobby 1504 and a halfs off of the Rip Squeak that has them right now to give you some idea of uh, where I'm at with it. So, great question, Benjamin. Uh, Richard says 1408, 3750 KV scaled down to 10%. Uh, so, every single 1408 I've ever uh, flown which is three different sets, Richard, were horrendously coggy. And so if yours are very coggy, then absolutely that's the problem. There is no way to fix that. You can't tune that out. That is a physical problem with most 1408s. Uh, apparently, somebody in the chat was telling me that there is one set of 1408s in existence that are smooth. They're like 1408C is how they're they're designated. I think maybe they're made by iFlight, don't quote me on that, um, but they are very smooth. Basically, if you take a motor, if you take a motor in your hands and you spin it like this, there should be no like defined notches, or it's, it's also called uh, motor cogging. Uh, you want to be able to spin the motor like this and it should be nice and smooth. Uh, it will have little detents. You will feel, feel little detents. It's not actually a detent. It's when the, the magnetic field of the bell and the stator pole um, hit their strongest and then weakest point. Um, but they should be nice and smooth. They, it shouldn't be like... <laughs> and my guess is that you've got one of the many sets of 1408s that are very coggy. And, and when you spin them like this, you're probably going to be like, oh, shit, okay. Um, if you have any other rig, go do that same test, especially if you have a 5-inch rig. Most 5-inch rig uh, motors are nice and smooth um, to just sort of, you know, dial yourself in. Uh, but yeah, more than likely the problem is the motors, and like I said, there's no fixing it. Um, that is just a mechanical problem. Most, uh, I mean, 1408s are really specifically only for a racing rig. A, a 1408 motor has no business being on anything other than a hardcore racing rig. Um, the, the motor manufacturers don't tell you that um, because why would they? You know, they'll, they just want to sell as many motors as possible. They don't give a shit if you like them or hate them. Um, so, yeah, that's more than likely your problem, Richard. Uh, Abraham says, what's your typical glide weight? Just finished throwing my f uh, first one together. Comes in at 45 dry, including H8 uh, or 675 with a fat ass 1500 mAh China Hobby Line for us. Uh, mine are between 600 and 610 grams with a session 5, which is 80 grams, um, and a 170 gram battery, which is a Tattoo R Line 6S 1050 version 1. <clears throat> and we're caught up on chat. And by we, I mean me. Uh, so let's dig into the, uh, let's actually do Whoop Wednesday. So uh, I am on a, it feels like never ending journey uh, to try to figure out what the hell motors I can put onto one of these cockroach 75 millimeter whoops uh, to get clean video, but also to get enough power where I'm happy with the performance. And um, two weeks ago, two Wednesdays ago, uh, I realized that the prototype T-Motor 0803s give better performance than the uh, Beta FPV 1102 18,000 kV motors. Um, which is interesting and kind of pisses me off because these Beta FPV 1102s are beautifully smooth running motors here, uh, and the the T Motor 0803s are noticeably coggier. Uh, but I don't think these are coggy enough to cause uh, a, a a problem. Uh, we also have this is the version two Acro B board, which has a, a shitty gyro on it. Uh, but these are happy model 1102s, um, and these are also, these are sort of somewhere in between these two guys in the scale of uh, cogginess. Now, this setup here gives me jello on the Insta360 Go. I think that's because this version 2 uh, Nubidrone Acro B board 
does not have an MPU 6000 on it. And I have all kinds of problems with this rig because of that. This has a 32K gyro that's just not as good. So I don't think it's because of these motors. Um, I could totally be wrong, but my guess is that the problem with this rig that's causing the jello is the flight controller. Um, this rig here, this 65 millimeter tiny whoop, does not give me jello in the Insta360 Go, and these 0802 Happy Model motors are kind of like they're they're the same cogginess. Yeah, they're the exact same cogginess as these T Motor Prototype 0803s. Um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, realistically, I, I at some point. I'll probably take these Happy Model 1102s off of here, and I'll probably put them onto one of these frames. Um, with these two guys have the version one Acro B board with the MPU 6000. Uh, what's up, Alex Dvornik? How are you, man? Uh, so yeah, I can't really base much of anything off of this because it has the different uh, the different board. So let's do this. Let me actually take, uh, let me take the canopy off of this. I, I, I think it's time to disassemble this rig because with this version two AIO in here, this rig is worthless. Like I, I it's, it's not worthless, but I can't carry the Insta360 Go on it. And, and realistically, that's what I do with Tiny Whoops. I, I don't really fly Tiny Whoops for fun because they don't have HD. Um, I fly them in order to carry an Insta360 Go around. Um, so for this rig to not be able to carry the Insta360 Go around without getting jello, which makes it, you know, which makes the footage useless, this rig is kind of useless. Um, so yeah, let's pull this guy apart. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this canopy, I'm gonna start using this canopy on these two rigs, which whichever one of these that I kind of decide on, um, that's the the direction that I'm gonna go with the um, uh, the what am I what am I trying to say here? I kind of lost my train of thought. Uh, oh well, wait. Actually, before I I go there, uh, I have to swap motors again. So I have to swap. So the reason why we want to try, uh, the reason why we're testing 1S versus 2S tonight is because last last time I decided that this rig, and uh, sorry, these motors, these 0803 22,000 kV motors from T-Motor are like drastically outperform, nah, not drastically, but they definitely outperform these Beta FPV 1102 uh, 18,000 kV motors. All right, so this rig is gonna stay together as it is. This rig, I'm gonna take these motors off because they didn't perform up to par, and these motors are a kV that is meant for 1S. Technically speaking, I could run this rig on 2S, but holy shit, I would have to limit these motors down to like 60%, and, and that's a little bit much. I mean, at that point, I can just do the same thing with this, right? I can just put this thing on 2S. Um, so that that's kind of not the point. What what I think is going on... All right, so let, let's, let's talk about motors for a second. Um, so the designation, uh, the way that they size and name motors is four digits, right? 0802, 1102. Uh, 2004, in this case, 2306. The first two numbers are the width of the motor. So in this case, 23, 23 millimeters wide. The, set, the last two millimeters tall. When you start thinking about, when, when we really shrink these motors down to the point where it's an 0802, it is only eight millimeters wide and only two millimeters tall. All right, on that one rig over there with the purple props, 
That's an 11.02. So the 0802s are the right size for the 65 millimeter whoop, but we tested 0802s on the 75 millimeter whoop and they were drastically too small. So now our choices are 0802 is too small. Our choices are to go up to 0803 for more stator height or 1102 for more stator width. Now, going from 0802 to 0803, that is a 50% increase in stator height, right? From two millimeters tall to three millimeters tall on the stator height. That is a huge change. That is a huge, huge, huge increase in stator volume and just a, a big increase in percentage, right? Versus going from eight millimeters wide to 11 millimeters wide, that is nowhere near the same increase in stator volume. Um, and, and yeah, so I think that the 08, I think that our testing last two weeks ago showed that the, um, the 0803 is a better choice than the 1102. Um, I could totally be wrong and it's, and it's really hard to be definitive at all without the same company making two mo making an 0803 and 1102 in the exact same KV, right? Um, so there's a little bit of guessing that's going to be going on here, but it kind of doesn't matter because I'm testing all of the motors that we have available to us. Um, so like whatever. Uh, now next, um, this guy on the 22,000 KV 0803s flew awesome on 1S. This guy with the 1102 18,000 KVs was underpowered on 1S. It's probably because of the KV difference. 22,000 KV versus 18,000 KV. That's a massive difference. Um, so... I'm kind of talking myself into right now running this on 2S and scaling the motors down to the equivalent KV because then here's here's the other option Here, um, the, the plan was to pull these motors directly off but I think I'm talking myself into not doing that quite yet um, I have another set of 0803s the, the reason, the whole reason behind the 1S versus 2S thing is that I have another set of motors here that are too low of a KV um, for, uh, for 1S. And they are right here. Right? Yep. Beta FPV 0803, 12,000 KV motors. So the plan was just to put these directly onto this rig, but I think I would rather test this rig first before I do that on 2S with these existing 1102s because I'm really curious if 1102 or 0803 is the right motor size. And without two, yeah, like I said, without identical motors from the same manufacturer, it's really hard to to definitively say yay or nay on that. Um, do I have any 4S batteries that are still a little charged? I need to get another couple batteries on the charger here to really do this testing thoroughly. I have four Newbie Drone 250s ready to go. Um, I would like to have at least two more. So there's two more. Here's four more. Yeah, this is what I want. I want four more of these. Uh, so let me get this charger up and running. Uh, Toxic FPV says there's a tiny whoop 0803 22,000. I didn't even realize that that existed. Um, I mean, it's tough to justify testing that because that's exactly what these T-motor prototypes are. 
They're 0803 22,000s. Um, and yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I would love to test those just to be a complete nutcase. Uh, but if I end up, well, yeah, okay. So, you know, uh, I'll make you a deal. I will test those motors if I put the Insta360 Go on this setup with these T Motor prototypes and there's Jello. Because maybe those, uh, do you guys see me spit just now? Probably not. Uh, because, yeah, I, the 0803 22000s on this rig really felt good. Um, I haven't put an Insta360 Go on that yet, though, but I, I kind of can't because this rig has my asinine uh, double connector setup, so there's a ton of loss in the connectors. Um, I'm going to have to direct solder these prototype 0803s in order to really know, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to have enough power at that point. Um, let me get a couple of these motors on, or a couple of these batteries on the charger real quick here. Uh, I need a 4S battery with some juice left. Uh, what do we got over here? Hang on, friends. I'll be right back. I just need to find a 4S battery with a little bit of ass left in it. This one here is at 3.7 per cell. That ain't the one. Uh, where did that big... Where did that big ass 1100 4S go? Chat, where is it? Can you guys see it from there? Where is it? Is it over here? Or is it over there? Where is it? Where's that 1100? Did you, have you guys seen it? Oh, here we go. I got one. Four volts per cell. That should be just enough extra juice to charge up four of these 250 milliamp newbie drone golds. All right, and there we go. Cool. Leave that charging for a little bit, and let me let me make sure I didn't miss anything. In chat. Abraham says, uh, "Fine, I'll grant you that cogging might matter on two to four inch micros, uh, pending Rosser's analysis." Uh, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it definitely doesn't matter on 10 to 30,000 kV tiny whoops. Um, I mean, I'll let you know. I'll have the answer to that sooner than later. Um, yeah. Th this test is going gonna, is gonna to really show that. Uh, I have not, I really haven't tested that at all yet. Uh, I have not put the uh, the Insta360 Go on any of these rigs yet, mainly because I have this crazy connector set up sucking away all the power, and these things will barely pick up the Insta360 Go at that point. And what that's going to do is that's going to put them at a different. No, it'll put them. In, it'll put them in the right RPM range. So yeah, I do. I need to do that test. Um, I've been meaning to do it. I've been meaning to just throw them on here, but uh, you know. There's some shit going on in the in my life right now. Uh, Rumi Tim says, it's right there. Oh, nice. Thanks, dude. Uh, Toxic says, I'll talk to Jesse about him sending you a set. Not saying it will happen, but it's possible. I appreciate it, Toxic. Um, that is super cool of you. Ken Hill says, where did you get the little LEDs on your rip squeak? It looked like I can't find them that small. Uh, yeah, they're hard to find. They're made by Flywoo, uh, and they are... Um, they are 15 millimeters long, uh, and you have to buy them on Flywoo's website. It's super annoying. June Loco says, why don't you add an XT30? Uh, the big reason is that a lot of people that are adding XT30s uh, to, the, to the small little AIO boards, the lack of resistance in the XT30 blows up the AIO board. Um, also, it's a weight thing, and XT30 is shockingly heavy. Um, and also none of the batteries have XT30s on them, so it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a nightmare. <laughs> Alec Dvornik says, can you private message me the motors you find are the best before you publicly announce them? Um, I can try, Alec. I can all but guarantee you that I'll forget, though. Um, I'll forget by the end of this live stream because I'm about to do 8,000 other things. Um, but if, if you remind me, I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try to remember. I'll try my best to remember. 
Uh, June Loco says, FPV Cycle has 1S LiPos. Uh, they do, but they're for toothpicks. They're a, a, a huge amount of uh, MAH, uh, and they would be way too heavy for... Uh, Alex Warren says, JK. I know why you're asking, Alec. It's a good reason to ask, so that you can buy some before they go out of stock forever. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, look what I got. It's a, uh, it's a Weeha nut driver for uh, M5 nuts. So now I have, uh, I have both. M3, or, or M2 and M3. I said M5, I meant to say M3. Okay, this is whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is like a good little freestyle 75 mil whoop, but that's about it. Uh, so I can just put this aside. And it fell. So yeah, these are those other motors, but let's uh, let's let's get this guy on these beautifully smooth 1102s. Uh, let's get this on to 2S. Well, let me see if I can figure out how to get this on to 2S. Uh, so the problem is how the hell the batteries are gonna fit. Um, this cockroach frame does come with these little TPU battery holders. God damn it. I thought, I thought that there was a double battery holder in here. Alright, there's not. Uh, they have the STL file on their website. At some point I'm gonna bug you, I'm gonna bug you 3D printing fellas to hook a brother up, but for now I think I can just stuff two of these batteries in here um, and kind of get away with it. So let me see what I can do here. Let's let's get this thing up on 2S. The, the other problem with 2S on these tiny whoops is that the ESC gets awful hot when it when it runs on 2S. All these little tiny, um, well, not all, the, those, there are a couple of these tiny whoop boards that say that they're compatible with 2S, but man, with, with, with how unreliable AIOs are, it's just not a great idea, I don't think. Uh, so, this 2S setup is going to have to really blow me away, and it's going to have to have absolutely no jello whatsoever on the Insta360 Go um, for me to. Uh, so, a little bit of backstory with the Insta360 Go's, they have a really hard time with jello. A really, really, really hard time with jello. Uh, both the original and the Insta360 Go 2. Uh, there are some reports that the Insta360 GO 2 is actually worse in terms of Jell-O uh, than the Insta360 GO 1. Um, I've heard this from multiple people. I've heard this from Tommy Tabahia. I've heard this from Bill, who runs BQE. Um, they've both got a lot of people running their frames with Insta360 GO 2s on them, and they're both basically saying that everybody is having Jell-O problems. Christ, Tom, in, in Tommy's uh, 250 video, he's having all kinds of jello issues, and, and he actually talks about it in there. Um, so yeah, the, the smoothness of these little motors uh, is becoming more and more important, in, in my opinion. If that's what's causing the jello, which it kind of, I mean, there's kind of nothing else that really could be. <laughs> like, it sort of has to be this. Um, I thought that I figured out a way to stuff both of these batteries in here. Does this cable have enough length to run to the other side? I don't think it does. Nah, it doesn't, so they both do have to be... They both do have to be on this side. God damn it. I thought for sure that I had a, uh, a little TPU piece uh, that would... Uh, screw to the bottom of this frame and give me a little double battery holder but I definitely didn't in that little case so there's actually a chance that we won't be able to do this testing site <laughs> I might need one of you guys to uh, 3d print that shit 
Although, no, I'll just throw a rubber band around the bottom. Although, wait, no, there it is. There it is. Yep, there is a way to do it. I thought so. Okay. It's a little jank, but, I mean, who cares for testing? All right, cool. So we got the batteries in there. Uh, I need to plug this in. Oh, I need to remove them now because I need to plug it into Betaflight and put the, uh, the motor limiting on. So let me do some math. Uh, this is, well, chat, do me a favor. You guys do math. This is 18,000 kV. I'm going to put this on 2S. What's the motor limiting percent that I need to run this at for it to equal 22,000 kV on 1S? First person to answer correctly wins nothing. Uh, second person to give the same answer as the first person wins, uh, I don't know, a reach around. <laughs> Not true. That's a lie. Uh, yeah. Can you guys figure that math out? Do we have any math whiz, whizzes up in here? Uh, Ava the Hab says, uh, if you just shoot me a link on Discord whenever you need some TPO, I'll print you anything you need. I appreciate that, Aber. Uh, Alex says, I got some Saint Smart TPU in today. I'd love to hook you up. Just message me on Facebook. All right. Your Majesty says, what do you got going on there with the motor plugs? Um, Newbie Drone, in their infinite lack of wisdom, uh, decided to use a proprietary motor plug. So, um, so none of the non-Newbie Drone motors uh, will plug directly into the AIO. Uh, and since I, needed to, I, I wanted to do motor testing where I would be switching motors off and on and off and on and off and on, um, I couldn't just direct solder them every time, uh, especially because this cockroach frame, uh, in order to put the motors through, you have to run the wires through, so in order to do the direct soldering, you have to do it while the AIO is in the frame, and it's very difficult. Um, so yeah, I had to make adapters, uh, and it was an absolute nightmare. Uh, about two months ago on, on Whoop Wednesday, there were two Whoop Wednesdays in a row where all I did for like eight hours straight was make those adapters. It was a total nightmare. Um, T-Bird is in the house. He says, what's up? Heading to work. Two more nights left. Your Majesty says the TPU holder on the bottom and the other battery up in there. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, so nobody uh, nobody did the math. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to do the math. Uh, 18,000 kV. I'm going to use a calculator. Uh, so... 18,000 kV times 2, so it's uh, 30, 36,000 kV equivalent. Jury is here, says 0.61, so I can test that by multiplying 36,000 times 0.61 equals 21,960. Perfect. 61 is the number. Thank you, Jory. Uh, Alec Dvornik says 0.59. I think that's a little low. Whatever. I'm just going to do uh, 60. I'm just going to do 60. 60%. That'll be close enough. Uh, okay. So we need to take the Insta360 Go off of the USB port. And we're going to go here. Plug this fella in and fire up Betaflight and put a little bit of a throttle cut on this thing. Connect. What's up, Recursive? How are you? Pid tuning, and we're gonna take the scale to 61%. Aver the Ham says, he blocked me. Who blocked you? Uh, cool, 61%, oh wait, no, I gotta switch the cell count to two. There we go. 60%, 61% cell count 2. I'm going to leave everything else the same. The tune, everything is the same between these two rigs. Uh, ooh, the dynamic idle is going to be wrong now, though. So I'm going to just zero out the dynamic idle. Uh, it makes such a subtle difference to possibly no difference. Um, yeah. <laughs> Alec Dvornik won nothing. Uh, Alright. Cool. So we're good. 61% throttle cut. That should even out the uh, KV difference. I got a screen for you lovely people. And let me get 
water get out of the way. Get this shit out of the way. Get everything out of the way. Cause we're about to rip some tiny whoops around my fucking apartment where I live alone, god damn it, and it's nice. It's nice to be an inconsiderate prick and just blast tiny whoops around in here. There are some advantages, man. There's some advantages to your to your your wife of 15 fucking years leaving you. There's some advantages. Alright? It's not all fucking doom and gloom. I'm looking at the bright side of this shit. It's alright. I'm gonna be alright. Motherfuckers can't get me down. Try to get me down. I'll get right back up. What do you think of that? Knock me down. Ain't nobody gonna knock me the fuck down. Fuck that. I'm here to stay, people. You can't get rid of me if you fucking try. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so angry all of a sudden. Ah, uh, yeah, I do. It's a, it's a very angry situation that I'm in. How the hell did I have this, uh... How the hell did I have these batteries in here? Was, uh, was one of them... I think one of them was up like that, right? And then the other one was... Man, I don't know how the hell I had them. They were they were definitely staggered, right? They were staggered so that the big ass stupid plastic part was uh, was out of the way. I think, right? There's a little spudger here, courtesy of Frank Nicholas. Get this guy going. Uh, I think it was. I think they were in here a little bit better than that, weren't they? How the hell did I have these in here? Why did they, they just refuse to go at this point? Um, I'm really pushing on them. I don't want to be pushing on them that hard. Uh, Bueller? Maybe, maybe it was flatter down here? Why is this, why are you like this? What, how did this even happen? How did it get looped around the propeller? What? Why are you doing this to me? Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, let's try this again. So if I put that one like that. How the, how the hell did I have them in here? It just like went in, like it, it was just good to go. I'm gonna have to rewind the, I'm gonna have to watch my own stream and rewind it. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. That's it, that's it right there, right there, right there, right there. Right there. So that one goes like that, and then this one goes like, oh, wow, it's still fucking fighting me. It's a fighter. It's a bitey little bastard. Come on, man, get in there. Get in there, you little jerk. Uh, I don't know. Was that it? How the hell? Did I just have him, like... Hanging out the back, all janky. What the hell is going on here? What? Everything was cool a minute ago. I should have just made that adjustment in the goddamn OSD. That was my problem. Uh, I was close. I, I almost didn't pull the batteries out because I actually had the thought for a moment of like, what if I can't get them back in like this? Durr. We really can't do it again. What the fuck? Get in there. I I legitimately have to fucking watch my own goddamn stream to figure out how I had it in there. Uh hold on. Hold on. <sighs> oh, really? You won't even show me the the thing and the place? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? It's gonna not work. Uh, oh boy, that's gonna be hard to find. Ooh, 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 there it is. Oh wait, no, is that from a minute ago? That's from like a minute ago.
Okay, yeah, yeah, it's before this. It's before this. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Here it is. Look at that fucking face only a mother could love. Uh... Okay. Okay, we're almost there. Hey, hey, hey! Hey! There it is. Okay, so I put one in, and the bottom was past that bit. The bottom was past that bit there. And then I struggled some more. And that was it. That's it. That's it. The bottom was past that bit. The bottom was past that bit. You guys got it? It's past that bit. The bottom was past that bit. Uh, uh, so, okay. So the bottom... Okay, yeah, so it was like that. Okay, it was like that. And then this one goes like this, and it was, okay, yeah, so it was just all janky like that. I didn't think it was that janky, but I was wrong! Okay, now hold on. Uh, uh, this one needs to be here, and then this one needs to be there. Okay. Okay, there it is. So now this guy can plug in here. But then this slight, oh, you jerk. It won't go because this is in the, because this post is in the way. Well, maybe it'll just barely hang on there. Oh, and then this one's not long enough. Ooh! God damn you. Uh, okay, let's, let's try another tact here. Uh, okay, put that there. Put that there! Ding dong! <laughs> what fuck was that? Uh, put that guy there. And then we're gonna just take the- Why am I just not putting a fucking rubber band below this? Uh, that guy there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Let's see if it'll reach this time. The real qu- Ooh, and that stays plugged in a little bit better. Don't blow up, please. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. <sighs> Ooh, it didn't blow up! All right, we gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry. It gets really hot really fast. Oh wait, okay, no, hold on. Yeah, hold on, I'm not ready. Welcome to I'm not ready. Oh boy! Okay, see, this is the issue with the with the 2S on these AAOs, is it's like, it's like, uh, the, the limit of, of, yeah, it's just creepy. Your Majesty, yeah, that, that would make sense, but, I mean, I haven't done anything that makes sense yet. Why start now? <laughs> kind of thing. New Madrid Whoop! Okay! Here we go! 2S Whooping! If this board catches on fire, I'm going to be pissed! Uh, let me get you guys focused in here... And move this a little closer. Okay. There we go. Alright, let's see how it is. Oh, it blew up already. Not yet. Soon, though. Uh, let me put the OSD on. Oh my god, it hovers at like no throttle. Oh my god, it's hard to fly. Yeah, so, I mean, it's got, I think it's got a bunch of power. See, look at that core fucking temperature warning. Look at the temperature coming up. Oh, wow, it's coming up really fast. Yeah, I can't, no, see, I, I can't, 2S is no good. It's going to cook the ESC in this, this, uh, okay. Yeah, no, see, that's, uh, yeah. 2S is not, no. No 2S. 
No, that's too much. I can't. I can't. It's it's a rig that I'm gonna do work with, and I can't have that. You know. Uh, so. Yeah, that's uh, that's an easy decision. Um, that I don't even have to. I don't even have to swap the motors out. There, there's no reason to even swap the motors. Um, uh, Abraham says go outside and rip it. It's not a rig that's ever gonna get flown outside. Like these are rigs to fly indoor, uh, indoor tours. Um, so yeah. Uh, Jory is here. Says what about the Tiny Hawk S board? Uh, it's eighty dollars. Um, it does have black box though. I, I really love that it has black box. Uh, Your Majesty says tri blades instead of four. No, so it's not. It's not even a. It's not even a thrust issue. It's just that these tiny whoop AOs don't like 2S. Um, they're meant for 1S, and they like can kind of deal with 2S. Uh, when you put them onto a toothpick frame, uh, they get a lot more airflow, um, and that I guess that that allows you to run 2S on them. But uh, yeah, I mean realistically, I I just. I can't have that. I can't have the board getting hot like that. So, um, at this point, at this point, I think that I, um, I think at this point I'm going to direct solder these 1102s, the really smooth running, not coggy at all ones, and the T-Motor Prototype 0803s. Uh, because these 0803s that are only 12,000 kV are not going to work because I can't run these these AIO boards on, um, you know, I scoff at that Tiny Hawk board being eighty dollars, but uh, these these newbie drone boards aren't aren't much less money than that. Let me actually look at that uh, Tiny Hawk board because I think it's regular dimensions now, right? What's it called? The Tiny Hawk S, Tiny Hawk S AIO. Let me take a look here. Oh yeah, it won't work because of the shape. I thought it was a. Uh, I thought they. Uh, what's that? No, it's the new. It's not the tiny hawk okay. yet. Uh, oh, is it the VTX power? It's that new, tiny hawk board. The new tiny hawk board isn't this dumbass shape. I thought. Oh, hold on. Let me just go to Emacs's website, and I'll look up the uh, the names of the. Uh... Yeah, I'm not doing international game of whoop over the ham. I tried to do it last year, and I, I just don't. I don't have the ability to do an edit every week. It's it's just it just doesn't work. Nano hook also. Uh, Your Majesty says. All right, let me take a look. So this is it, the Baby Hawk Two. So this. Fuck was that? Why did it go back? I right clicked it. Okay. So the Baby Hawk 2 is the one uh, that's got the board. Well. Well, shit. Shouldn't they just have an AIO section? What if I search for AIO? I know I'm asking a lot of your website, Emacs. Uh, okay, so here's one Nano Hawk. That's that. But the the problem with the Nano Hawk board is that the VTX doesn't have enough power. Um, uh, it's only 25 milliwatts, which doesn't do me any good. Uh, so here's the Baby Hawk 2 HD. I think this is the I think this is the one. Yeah, eighty dollars. Yeah, right. Uh, so the question is. What is the VTX output? And they have no info whatsoever on it. Uh, so, but it is a regular 26 by 26. 
Uh, it's solder pads for the motor motors, which is annoying, but kind of whatever. I'm going to have to do that with the newbie drone boards anyway. Oh, there's no onboard VTX. That's the problem. I need an onboard. Uh, I need an onboard VTX. And then this is the NanoHawk board. And I'm pretty sure the problem is that the VTX is. Wow, man, you guys make it really hard. I can't believe you don't have any specs on these boards. I have to look up the actual rig. Uh, Rock Two HD. Oh, well, here it is. Let's click this. Take a look at the uh, at the VTX output. Oh, right. It doesn't have a VTX on it at all. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so that ain't gonna work. Um, so this board won't, this board won't do me any good. Uh, so it's down to the NanoHawk board, and I know that uh, I looked up, I remember looking up the NanoHawk board, and uh, it's only 25 milliwatts, but I'll double check. Ba 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 ba! And where is it at? Um, let me just do this. Twenty-five MW. Yep, there it is. Twenty-five milliwatts. Yeah. So uh, neither one of those will work. Um. Yeah, that's okay. So one S only. That sucks. I was kind of uh, excited by the 2S thing because then I could just run the um, uh, Kema. I'm about a month behind on shipping the giveaway stuff, so as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, just um, my wife left me and my life is a fucking hot mess. Um, we've been together for 15 years, so I hate to make excuses, but that's really why. Um, <laughs> It's it's just a little bit of a nightmare in, in my world right now. So I'm I'm trying my best, man. I'll, I'll get it out as soon as I can. Um. So. Fuck. I was really hoping the two S thing was gonna work. Um. trying to think of any possible way to bring down the temperature so I could um, the problem with the 2s toothpick boards is that they don't have um, they don't have VTX's built in and I'm really trying like with these builds being so small like fitting a fitting a VTX in them is a real pain in the ass and it starts to add weight um, So, I could turn down the ramp up power. Crux 3 board? What the hell is that, Jury? Crux 3 AIO. Uh, it's from Happy Model. Ugh. Gross. Um. Happy Model has a tendency to do dumb shit on their AIOs. Yeah, see, so this is what I mean by doing dumb shit. Putting a, a plug header on the side like this eliminates the ability for that board to work in a tiny whoop frame. It is fucking maddening. Um, so yeah, unfortunately that won't work. Um... Uh, the Flywu Goku board does not have a VTX built in. Beginning FPV. Um, yeah, none of them do. N none of the boards have VTXs built in. It's it's very very rare. And if they do have VTXs built in, uh, they're only 25 milliwatt, which doesn't really do me any good because I'm trying to use this shit like uh, deep inside of buildings. June Loco says I, the one I have does. W what's that mean, June Loco? Uh, what's the one that you have? Oh. Uh, Crazy B V3. Yeah, so the Crazy B V3 board, uh, I, I tried a bunch of Whoop Wednesdays ago, 
and they put the stupid plug header on the side, which on the cockroach frame uh, contacts, uh, so it doesn't work. Um, contacts the frame itself. And then when you break that plug off, expecting for there to be pads beneath, there are not. Um, so there's, yeah, that board doesn't work. Um, fuck. Uh, mm, damn. Man, that ESC temperature shot up like a son of a bitch, too. Uh, I can try pulling the ramp up power down. Yeah, it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. Let's get this thing into BLHL yes. We'll pull the ramp up power down. Uh, that'll potentially also help with the incredibly low, uh, low throttle, uh, low uh, hover point. I gotta do this fast. All right, it's powered on. BLHL configurator. Ugh. Come on, connect. Read setup. What's up, Ed Ricker? Thanks for coming by, brother. Startup power. Let's come all the way down to 1.0. It might actually not fly with it that low. Tiny, tiny whoops really need uh, a high ramp up power. But let's see. All right. So that's good. We're unplugged so that the ESC doesn't start heating up again. Um, the, the, I'm, I'm super hesitant to do this, uh, because Paul McDonald says, sounds like you need to decide a tiny frame. What's that mean, Paul? Uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I, I'm really hesitant. Even if this does work, I'm still really hesitant to do it because, like, the whole 2S on this AAO, like these AAOs blow up all the time anyway, right? And running them at 2S is like just, you're just asking for it to blow up. You're literally just like, like, hey, please blow up. Please, I want you to. I'm going to do everything in my power to get you to blow up. Um, so I'm very sketched out about that. But, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Alec Dvornik says, what about Happy Model Crazy BX? Uh, the Crazy BX, that's actually the one that I do. All of the Happy Model boards have uh, either the motor plugs in stupid positions or additional uh, plugs on the side of the board that don't work with these... Uh, that don't work with these uh, Cockroach 75 frames. It's, it's really a shame. They really fucked up in that respect and they should be hit with shovels have a good night Kama. thanks for hanging brother alright so let me get ready here and then I'll plug in and we'll see what happens with the uh, AIO temperature welcome to OpenTX or the ESC temperature rather Alright, that plug is probably gonna fall out, but whatever. Uh, you guys have a video? Yeah, you do. Alright, cool. Let's see. And it's gonna reset, because that's what it does. And come on back to me. Thank you. Still hovers very low, but that's fixable. It doesn't actually have that much power. But that's a, it's hard for me to say that. Look, the, uh, the ESC temperature is not, oh, there it is. Let's see how quick it comes up, though. Man, it comes up quick. Yeah, no, not doing it. Not going to do it. Not going to blow this AIO up. And the motors are not hot. The motors are not hot at all. So it's not like an oscillation problem, it's just, yeah, it, it's, it's, 2S is just too much. Um, 
Let me drop the startup power down even farther. Because 1.0 is still really high for the startup power. Um, uh, but see, now the ESC is like cooking hot, and I'm going to have to hook it up to, uh, to the batteries again. Man, this is a bad idea. This is going to fucking bite me in the ass. This is going to blow up. I'm calling it now. I'm going to move the startup power all the way down to 0.5. That's the uh, the default for uh, fi for everything other than tiny whoops. All right. Unplug it again. Hopefully the ESC will have cooled off a little bit here. And... Okay. All right, battery's going in. One. And... Come on. Two. All right, plug and plug. All right, let me hurry, 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 hurry. Reset. All right, let's see if this is any better. Not coming on yet. There it is. Wow, yeah, man, it comes on like. It does, the startup power doesn't seem to really help it. it. Seems to come on right at about the same time. Um. Yeah, I think I think that's game over, man. For two S, I just I just don't really think that. Uh, I just don't think two S is gonna work. Uh, until an AIO comes out that, uh, that ticks all the boxes. This is the only AIO that really ticks all the boxes at the moment. Damn. Uh, Aber the Ham says 2S needs space. Um, I mean, you can just motor limit it down, and, and believe it or not, the, the, the double 2S 250s are only like half a gram heavier than like the 450 and the 550 1S. Um, so it's not any heavier. Um, and that didn't really make great power, if I'm honest. Let, let me fly this 0803 really quick uh, on one of the bigger batteries uh, to get a feel for power. Because that... That really, that didn't make, I, I was thinking the 2S was going to be mega power and it was going to like really win me over, uh, but that was not mega power by any stretch of the imagination. I actually don't think that was any more powerful than this 1S setup, but it's been two weeks since I flew it, so I could totally be wrong. Uh, I'm not going to set the... Uh, Screen back up. Let me just do this real quick. Nope. Wow, that was making less... Oh, 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 I had it throttle limited down. That's right, I had it throttle scaled down. Yo, this, this is it right here. Oh, wait, oh, threes. Oh, wait, oh, threes. Yeah. I'm going in on the 0803s for sure. Uh, yes, shut down, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 0803s, I think.
Alec Dvornik says his is in a cockroach. That's nuts, man. I must have spent like four Whoop Wednesdays trying to get that board to work in a cockroach frame, and I couldn't. Um, and then I just gave up. Uh, I guess I should maybe buy another one and, and pour a bunch more time into it. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Um... Yeah. Yeah. 0803s on 1S. That would be fine. And it sounds like Tiny Whoop has a uh, has an 0803 22,000. Oh my god, we've been going for two hours already? Okay. Um, so, next Whoop Wednesday, uh, I'm going to suffer through direct soldering these motors to this uh, newbie drone V1 AIO. Um, man, is that going to suck? <laughs> it sucked so bad last time I had to do it on that other one. Uh, I am not looking forward to that. Uh, but it'll be worth it once it's done, hopefully. Uh, I would love to do it now, but I'm kind of hungry. And uh, I, if, if I try to do something that's this frustrating while hungry, it ain't going to go well. You guys will love it because I'll just curse nonstop. Uh, but uh, I won't love it. Shit, man. Um, I really wanted these uh, Beta FPD 1102s to be good. The KV is just too low. 18,000 KV is just not enough. That's very frustrating. Because they're so smooth. They're so, so, so smooth. But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe that doesn't matter. Um, damn. I wish there was a more pitchy... Uh, these are the most pitchy 1.6 inch propellers that are available. I wish there was an even more pitchy uh, 1.6 inch prop because maybe that would make this viable. Um, and to be honest, maybe once I have these uh, motor wires out of here. Mm, you know what? We're going to do one more test. We're gonna do one more test. Uh, I'm gonna put the Insta 360 Go on this thing and weight it down and see how it is. Just because these prototype T motors make more power, maybe I don't need that extra power. Maybe I don't need that extra power. If this thing will pick up the Insta 360 Go half decent with these stupid ass adapters then once I get rid of the adapters it'll really pick the thing up and they're a smoother motor so I'm putting the startup power all the way back up to 1.5 and now I'm gonna fire up beta flight and I'm gonna take off the uh, motor limiting And what the fuck's it on profile three for? That's weird. Uh, cell count one, hundred percent. Save. Disconnect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a good little test. This is gonna be a good little test. So full power. And now I just need to swap the canopy. This will not take very long. I just need to swap the canopy over, and then I don't think it's going to pick. I think it's going to really struggle with this Insta 360 Go. And and at that point, um, yes, it's going to struggle a lot less with the um, without the without the adapters, but. Um, 
I don't want it to just struggle less. I want it to really be able to pick this fucking thing up. Because just struggling less makes it the same thing as the uh, as the 65 millimeter whoop. And that's not what I'm going for here. The, the 65 millimeter whoop is for carrying the Insta360 Go 1 when I need to be absolutely as small and quiet as possible. The whole point of building and, and developing this 75 setup is that it has more power and, and it can um, and it can carry more, i.e. the Insta360 Go 2, which is seven extra, or eight extra grams actually, which is a lot, it's 50% heavier. Um, but also, I can put the Insta360 Go 1 on it if I really need to like cover ground or like, you know, just have that bigger horsepower kind of setup. So there's no sense in like settling, right? Um, and these these T motor 0803s definitely make more power. Um, this is kind of a dumb test. This is me just kind of grasping at straws to to justify using these uh, these Beta FPV 1102s, just because I'm in love with how not coggy they are. Uh, but. And the other thing is, it, it might also not be the cogginess, it, it might be the balance. Uh, with these little tiny motors, uh, the manufacturers don't balance them. So there's a chance that these Beta FPV 1102s are better, ba god damn it, I forgot to plug the camera in, uh, are better balanced than the T-Motor prototypes. Uh, that's probably not true. If, if anything, the T-Motors are going to be better balanced because it's T-Motor. Um, Beta FPV does not have a great reputation for quality. T-Motor does. Um, so I'm, I'm just sitting here, you know, talking myself out of doing this test. But I almost have the, this other canopy on, so whatever. We'll just do it real quick. Uh, where's the other screw? Here it is. And while I'm at it, well, let's see, it's not, well, yeah, I'll, I'll put the, I'll hit the record button on the Insta360 Go. Maybe we can see some of the, or the lack of jello. No reason not to just hit record on the damn thing. Uh, I'm going to have to look at it on the laptop, though. Eh, I'll look at it, like, tomorrow or something. It's fine. This test isn't going to really tell us much anyway. But let's do it anyway. Okay, we got this guy, we got this guy, we're plugging it in. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wee, wah. As a, a fellow gangly man once said. Know what I mean? 17. Uh, and you thought that everyone had stopped quoting Borat. You were wrong. You were wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. And we are recording with the little Insta360 Go 2. I do need my goggles. That would really help me see where I'm going. You know what I mean? All right. Let's see what this thing is like. What the, uh, I'm not going to give you guys the monitor. Oh, that's brutal. No, no way. No way. I am at, at a standstill hover, I'm at 70% throttle. Nose down. Oh, wow, and it is just killing the battery. Nope. Not doing that. Okay, good little test. I had a fit, oh, oh, oh. Let me, uh, let me go up and down the hallway. Well, no, I'll be able to see if there was jello. I'll check that tomorrow. Uh, okay. So, 1S it is. 1S 450 and 550 mAh batteries on these little tiny whoops. Um, until, like, you know, next week when probably somebody will come out with a, uh, a board. A 2S board with a 100 milliwatt VTX. 
Maybe that's what the uh, maybe that's what the V3 Acro B board will be if if it ever comes out. Uh, lots of orange in the chat. Uh, Ava the Ham is out of here. It sounds like Paul McDonald says I have my Crazy B F4 Pro V3 in a trash can frame. Did have to snip off half the circles due to motor mounts uh, being side by side now rather than a V formation. Alex Dvornik says my proof. Uh, if I copy a link address and paste it in here and oh yeah so Alec yeah you you have it in the happy model frame yeah it works in the happy model frame it doesn't work in the in the cockroach frame remember when I said that um, yeah it doesn't work in the cockroach frame yeah I mean of, of course the happy model board works in the happy model frame uh, I'm not willing to run that happy model frame though it's it's too gummy um, and it's not, I, I need a more solid platform to, to keep the jello out of this thing. Um, Ken Hill says, put one battery in the holder, one of the, uh, rubber band, more airflow. Um, I mean, I guess, but no, <laughs> it just, it, it's, I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference. And, um, I just, I, I can't have these things running at like the limit you know, like, I can't have them, like, at the fucking, at the absolute limit of, like, what they can handle. Because it's just going to blow up. Like, the AIOs just blow up for fun anyway. Um, so running an AIO at the limit of what it's capable of is just a terrible idea. I can't, um, I can't do that. I can't go to a, a paying gig and have shit falling out of the sky, you know? And then, like, not be able to, yeah, it, it has to, uh, it's, it's got to be 1S. It's a good idea, though, Ken. Uh, Aber says 12,000 kV 0803 on 2S is uh, in a space big enough to stretch its wings uh, and get all up in the throttle. Um, yeah, that would probably make some good power. Uh, Alec Dvornik says 0603 motor is a tiny whoop. Uh, never seen that small before. Yeah, the, o the 0603s uh, got sort of like debunked or whatever uh, as the wrong size uh, last year. Uh, that's when, like, everybody kind of figured out that the 0802s were a much better motor size. June Logo says, that's crazy. I've had 20 whoops. Never had that issue heating up that fast. Um, 661 says, what's up? Alec Dvornik says, I had a feeling I had something like that going on. Yeah. Uh, T-Bird says, uh, you need to check out my Beta 75X HD. I think it would check all your boxes. Uh, Beta 75X. So the problem... <clears throat> problem with the beta boards is they're only 25 milliwatt um and they also don't allow you to run an external receiver and the internal receiver is garbage uh the i, I actually tried a beta fpv board and it was it was fail safing on the other side of the couch um so yeah the receiver is just useless but the big the bigger problem is that the vtx is not um uh the vtx is uh only 25 milliwatts um all right well, it, it didn't go as I'd hoped, but it went. Uh, we learned some shit. And, um, yeah. Tiny Whoop companies. Make an AIO with a 100 milliwatt VTX on board, external receiver, MPU 6000, that can handle 2S. Please. Uh, you guys have no idea what us pilots can do with that setup. Uh, for anybody that hasn't seen, this is like early days, man. I, I've only done a little tiny bit of flying and work with that 65 millimeter rig with the Insta360 Go on it, right? Keep that in mind. Look how fucking good this is that that's able to, uh, hold on, let me kill the, uh, the music in it. No reason to get copyright fuck this late in the stream present come on shitbird well here's a little short that I did with copyright free music computer stop being useless for fuck's sake for once in your life that's not fair it's often
So like, can you do that with a full size Cinewhoop? Absolutely. Can you do that with like a two inch uh, Beta ninety five X with an uh, a naked GoPro on it? Absolutely. But you won't. Well, you'll you'll do it once, and then they'll never invite you back because the fucking noise and the terror that those things have inside in a tight space like that is just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, the the whole ethos behind this shit that I'm doing with the Insta360 Go is that it's quiet and it's slow. That's the other thing. It's slow. Like, I've got this... Um, I, I built this uh, 85, Beta 85X, to do that same thing, but it's too heavy and it's too big, and that makes it cruise too fast. Um, you just can't do that. And then even this, it's just too loud. It's just too goddamn loud. Like... People get scared by the little 65. Like this, this, like you just, you don't, there's a big difference between something that scares people and they're like, Jesus fucking Christ, because that's not what, that's not what, that doesn't make good video, right? Like, like that makes, that takes you out of it, right? Like I was able to do that around people actually practicing yoga without being, obnoxious enough for them to be like get the fuck out of here or like get the hell away from me right um the whole point between behind trying to do it on these 65 and these 75s is that the power is low enough the weight is low enough that makes them nice and slow so that you can actually get shit like that in tiny little spaces but also it's just quieter and it's just less violent <laughs> so um yeah. I don't know. I've uh, I've flown them all, and this is where I've landed as the right rig for inside-y kind of shit like that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am, though. Who knows? Let me get caught up on chat, and I'm going to wrap this one up. It's been two and a half hours. Uh, DQ says, Do you happen to know the length of the Predator V5 Nano from front to back? Uh, I don't, but it's more than likely on their website. Foxier Predator Nano V5. Uh, go to Foxier. And... Looks like it is uh, 23 millimeters for the one with the, uh, with the, the, one with the plug header. And then looks like the pad one is 20.5. Uh, got any more brain busters? <laughs> what movie is that from? You guys know it? Uh, June Loco says, were you sitting? Uh, I was at the front desk. Uh, Jackalope says, I'd be chuckling like a child if I flew around those butts. Yeah, me too. DQ says he was standing at the front. Oh, we got that. I think I'm caught up. We caught up? We're caught up. Thanks for hanging, folks. What's it, 11.52? Um, probably not going to jump on the sim tonight. The sim gets me all fucking hopped up on goofballs, and that makes it hard to fall asleep. And I, I'm having a really hard time falling asleep anyway. Um since I'm sleeping alone for the first time in like 10 years. Um, so yeah, I, I probably won't jump on the sim. Maybe maybe sim tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Oh! Those of you that didn't bail yet are going to get a little treat. Uh, I've been meaning to do this, but I'm going to do it right now for you guys. So... Oh, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the batteries. I don't have the batteries. Shit. I have the new, um, I have the new 5143, uh, Moonlight Props. Nah, I gotta, okay, I can't, I can't fucking cock tease you guys like that. Especially if you, if you didn't bail a minute ago when I, uh, when I said, oh, it's time to stop. Mm. Oh, I got you guys. I'm just gonna spin one of these up for you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give you what you want, people. 
because that's how much I love you. You beautiful, beautiful. You, if, if you are on my Patreon, you better go on to my Patreon right now to show thanks for what I'm about to do. Rather than just saying, ah, fuck you guys and leaving. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work a little bit more because I love you people. Where are the... Where are the extra batteries? God damn it. These aren't the ones. Uh, you guys have seen the, the Rampage specific moonlights, right? Hey, thank you, Alex Dvorak with a 420 Super Jet. Yeah, it's also about to happen soon. Uh, where the hell have they gone? There they are. Nope, that's not them. Hey, there they are. Okay. I have to, I, I, I meant to do this anyway. Uh, you guys have seen the purple, the purple Rampage Moonlights, right? These ones? So that, that lights up in purple. It's a white LED and then that lights up in purple. Well, fuck it. I'll show you guys that too. Uh, okay. Hold on. I need the little battery pusher. It's going to be a little more confusing than, than I thought. Alright. So, I need to pop this top piece off, and I'm going to kick two of these batteries out. One, and two... And what are they, flat on the inside? Yeah, flat part on the inside. Yeah, you know what, fuck it, I'll do all four. I'll do all four, because uh, Patrick and I are gonna go out and do some, uh, some tandem double uh, moonlight flying, chasing, uh, this week. Because for the first time, maybe ever, I'm going to jump on the fucking hype train and I'm going to try to get something out in the in the FPV universe before anybody else. Um, not many people, I think there's only like a half a dozen of us, have these new 5143 Moonlight props right now. And I'm pretty sure that none of the other guys are running out and doing some tandem flying with them. Um, so, yeah... There's going to be something fucking cool coming. If, if it stops raining, it keeps raining. We, we were going to go out last night and do it, but then we got rained on. Um, and then it rained again tonight. Uh, but yeah, we're, we got to find a spot. Uh, and we got to be careful to not crash because there are only like 20 sets of these in the world right now. Um, so we really can't crash them, but that's okay. High right, high left, high right. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna. I, I want to just try to find a straight shot where we can just uh, where we can just blast in a straight line and see how close we can get to one another to to really try to capture the uh, the lit up props. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm sure if I can pull this off and do a, a nice little edit with it, Gemfan will put it all over their uh, social media stuff. Um, and that'll be pretty dope. That'll be pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know, man. Things come pouring out of my mouth. I, I try to keep them at bay. Uh, so yeah, the existing Moonlight propellers are 5146. Why does that say 5143? No. Wait a second. Oh my god, the Rampage Moonlights are 5143. Whoa. No way. They totally are. Wow. Oh, I don't think Gem Fan did that on purpose. Remy Tim with a fucking $40 super chat. Bro, thank you. He says, I got 
I got my first paid gig last night, and I and I only really pulled the trigger on all that because I was motivated, inspired by all the all, all the awesome stuff you do. So take the earnings because I appreciate the shit out of you, Daniel. Thank you, dude. Super fucking cool of you, man. All right. Well, oh here, yeah here. You guys can see it. Uh, dude, that's super cool. Uh, Daniel, hey, your your rampage uh, moonlight props, Daniel, are fifty one forty threes. So that's it's, it's so it's a white LED. Once it's spinning, you catch a little bit more of the purple. Probably looks better with this light on. Come to think of it. Yeah. So there you can really see the purple. Uh, holy shit! These are fifty one forty threes, yo. That's incredible. That's really really cool. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Uh, so these are the new. 5143 moonlights which are a, a totally different uh it's a totally different led setup and i'm going to show you that in one second i don't have any with batteries in them at the moment uh so that's what i'm going to do real quick here one battery two battery and little cover yo the rampage moonlights are 5143s holy shit That is really good news. Come on, get in there. Uh, the other moonlights, the non-Rampage uh, first generation moonlights are 5146s, which, you know, I mean, it's fine, but it, that's a little too much pitch for me. Uh, why the hell won't this um, come on? Hold on. Maybe it needs the extra force of the uh, prop nut. So these, this is the new 5143 Moonlight. And look what they did with the LEDs on this one. They put them, they put them there and they put them facing outwards. So it's gonna shine really brightly upwards. And it's also going to do this. It's going to make that shape. Uh, I'm going to fire this thing up in a minute, though, for you guys, so you get to actually see them. Um, versus, here's what the, the existing ones do. So this is the regular 5146 Moonlight. The standard one, not the Rampage one. Jesus. Get in there. Uh, it says on the blade, Daniel. And I, uh, I looked at the, at the, I looked at the profile of it, and it's, it's very obviously a, a 43 uh, profile, which is actually, it, the 5143s are actually a 36 pitch. So you can really, really tell. God, I hate these slim prop nuts, but sometimes you have to use them. Come on, you bastard. There we go. So this is the uh, 5146. Oh, farts. So it makes that shape. But see, the LED is in the hub, and the LED is shooting down. The LED is shooting outwards instead of shooting upwards. Um, so yeah, it makes that shape. And then now here are the Rampage ones, which make a totally different shape. All right. So here's the Rampage one. Which looks fucking cool, man. That purple looks really, really cool. In, uh, in person, it doesn't really show up as well on uh, through the camera. Man, you can't see it at all there. Um, but, yeah, let me actually fire these guys up so you can see them spinning for real. And I'll chop my hands off while I'm at it. 
Alright. Come on, get out of here. Get out of the way. What did I put the batteries in that back one, I think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is cool. I, I was gonna I was gonna just do this while I was watching TV. Uh, this is this is much better. So here's the 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 big difference though. So the the uh, the original ones, all of the gubbins are uh, Jackalope FPD with ten dollars towards the chicken tendy fund. Oh man, is anything open that has chicken tenders? I'll go buy chicken tenders right now and I'll do an Instagram story. Um, the main difference. I'll show you over here, uh, is that on these new ones, the PCB goes out here, and it's it's uh, it's stickied. You have to uh, you have to peel off uh, a backing layer and stick it down. There's a little uh, there's a little groove in the in the face of the propeller, like a little, you know the propeller face is like this. But then there's a little groove in it, and you drop the, the little PCB down in there, and it's got adhesive, and you just stick it down. Whereas the, the, the original ones, everything is, everything is internal. Because the LED is in the hub, and the LED is shooting down that blade. So the LED is at a 90 degree angle. Whereas with these new, with the new 5143s, see it? There's, see the three little LED chips? But dude, this looks fucking cool. This looks really cool with those three, and then it's gonna shoot a bunch of light upwards. I already have the the race wires on there, so that's kind of that's gonna kind of do the same thing. Uh, but this should still look damn cool. Uh, so let me get a couple batteries in here, and uh, I'll actually idle these damn things for you. Hopefully I don't cut my effing hand off in the process, but it should be all right. Maybe I'll just, uh, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll just, uh, uh, I'll just fire it up on, um, on, uh, turtle mode. That's not going to peel this off or anything, is it? Backflow. Technically it actually could, but I'm not going to spin it up to the moon. Uh, when when you get your first set of moonlight props and you start putting them together for the first time it, it's it's gonna be frustrating uh, once you've done it a couple times it's a lot easier ah shitters uh, by like the third or fourth one you're gonna be like oh okay and it's like, you can just sit on the couch while you're watching a movie or whatever and do it. It's no big deal. It's a little annoying, but whatever. You'll get over it. The first time you spin them up with the lights off, you'll be like, that was worth it. Uh, I mean, I assume that they, that they grooved it to take out the exact right amount of material that the, that the PCB weighs, right? I mean... It is gem fan. Like they're uh, they're kind of ultra ninjas, and they're the ones that have always had the best balanced propellers. So I, I can't possibly imagine that they uh, didn't think of the balance issues. I could totally be wrong, but I I highly doubt that. I mean, if they were truly unbalanced, they wouldn't be flyable at all. Um, because the pid loop will just go bananas. Uh, how the hell can I show this to you guys? I think what I'm going to do is arm them on the floor. I think I'll point this camera up like this. I can zoom this in, and then I can just put them down on the floor and arm them, and that way it'll actually fire all four up. Logitech camera settings. Give you guys as much zoom as... Oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are going to get sketchy up in here. Are you guys ready? You ready to see a grown man chop his toes off? Because it's about to go down. <laughs> I'll use this bench... Ba Wait, hold on. Let me check the voltage on this bench battery. I've been using it a bunch...
22.5, 3.7 cell. Good enough. Uh, okay. So... Let's do the, the new the new ones first. And in we go. Ah, come on, get in there. Get in there, you little shit. Okay. Transmitter. Welcome to open. Crossfire glide model. And, okay. So I'm gonna tighten the nuts down and then I'm gonna plug the bet. Nah, I have it on low power disarm. It'll be fine. Battery. Strap. Low battery. Crank the prop nuts. Please don't kill me, quad. Please don't kill me. Please be cool. Do not murder, do not murder, do not murder, do not murder. Do not murder, do not murder, do not murder. Please do not murder, do not murder. Shit, I forgot to turn the lights off in the room. Oh, these are the two big ones. Come on, oh yeah, perfect. Oh my god, <laughs> that looks so fucking cool. There it is. Oh man, you guys can barely see it. Oh, it's because I have the wrong scene on. Oh, <laughs> that is some Tron shit right there, boys and girls. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is cool in turtle mode. Oh boy, oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh my god, it looks so fucking cool in person. <laughs> it looks so sick in person. Hold on. Don't 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 do this. Don't ever do this. Don't tell anybody I did this. If you just cycle it, it's not that sketchy. Can't change the colors. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's the new ones. Oh my god, that is so cool looking. Let me unplug this. Okay. All right, we're safe. Let me just back off the uh, the nuts, and then uh, that'll turn the LEDs off. Boom. Boom. In case you guys haven't seen it, um, when you when you back off the uh, when you just loosen the the prop nut a little bit, it turns off the LED. Isn't that cool? Um, okay, so that's this one. Oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> like, it's in in person. It's so crisp. It's just this like perfectly crisp little little trio of circles. Oh, that's gnarly. That is really, really, really sick. Um, so those are the new those are the new 5143s. This rig has the uh, the old school V1 or 5146 moonlights. Although now in actuality what I've got here is a rig with 5143s on the rear and 5146s on the front. <laughs> so I I thought I was going to fly this rig with red on the front, purple in the back, but I mean, it'll work. The PID loop will take care of it, but... And I guess it kind of doesn't matter, because, like, if you're flying these, you're not really flying them for performance. Um, familiar says, do you have any Starlight props? What's a Starlight prop, uh, Familiar? Uh, is, are you just making a joke? 
because these are called Moonlight. <laughs> All right, so here are the uh, the previous gen. Do the same thing. Plug it in and just kind of take my chances for a second here while I crank these down. Alright, there's one, two. I really wish they would have made the Rampage props with a purple LED, but I'm pretty sure that the purple LED would have been so dim that it wouldn't have shown up. Um, so I'm assuming that that's, that's why they didn't do that, but man, they got my hopes up. I just smashed them all to hell. So it's a it's it's more of a it's like a wider surface. Man. Like I'm looking at it on the monitor, it looks so much cooler in real life. <laughs> oh shit yeah yeah good call good call there we go oh nope that's better Again, don't do this. Don't tell anybody that I did this. This should be our little secret. Yeah, again, uh, way cooler looking in, in person. Um, let me get this unplugged so it's safe. Okay. Uh, I'm serious, guys. Don't don't ever arm a rig in your hand like that. Um, I uh, I have a ton of confidence in my gear because I fly it a lot and I maintain it a lot. Um, it's although it it's still very dumb to do. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. I definitely shouldn't be doing it live on stream. Um, but uh, you know, I do it for you guys. That's that's a bad excuse. Um, loosen the props up and the LEDs turn off. Like magic. And there you go. So yeah, those are the new, uh, those are the new, the first ones were the new Moonlight props. Uh, I, I cannot wait to, uh, to see those in the air actually wailing around. That's going to be really cool. Trained professional. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. All right, friends. Thanks for hanging out. This was event. This was an eventful stream. Um, we debunked some shit. Whoop Wednesday leaves Aaron Ciotti with one less finger. Tune in next week. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rumi Team says, Ken Hell familiar. Fifty one forty three non rampage props are the Starlight. Oh, oh, I didn't even realize that. I didn't realize they changed the name. Um, but yeah, now you guys have seen all of the LED props that exist in the world. Uh, what size, uh, William Loesch says, what size 6 has to use while carrying a GoPro? Still don't have a GoPro yet, but what a good deal. Enjoying long flight times with 1300 mAh. Uh, William, I fly, uh, 1050, well, it depends, but 1000 mAh, 1050 mAh, uh, 6 and I get, like, 5 to 7 minutes or so, uh, depending on where I'm flying. With a GoPro Session 5, all up weight of like around 605 grams. Uh, Chris Croft says, Starlight looks like the same uh, ones you've got. Gemfan has Starlight prop, different lighting patterns. Um, cool. So yeah, now you guys have seen all the lighting patterns, even the ultra rare uh, Rampage ones. They only made 300 sets of these, uh, and they'll never make them again. So you guys got to witness history. Uh, thanks for hanging out, people. I love all of you. I'm going to bite your faces off.
Uh, I don't know what they cost. They're not expensive, though. It's like five bucks. It's scary cheap. Uh, be good. Uh, I might stream tomorrow. I might not. Um, definitely, I'll be here on Friday. Five inch Friday. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll try to finish up that rip squeak. I don't know. It depends. Uh, things are. Oh, wait. No. Tomorrow. Definitely not tomorrow. Uh, oh, shit. I need to charge some batteries. Tomorrow I will be in uh, South Carolina all day. Uh, cool. See you guys Friday. Be good. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Here comes some flying from the bridge again. Where's epidemic sound? Now let me zoom this camera out. Uh, bu 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 epidemic. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go. Angry, busy, and frantic. Now we're talking. Be good, friends. I love you all. Nah, I don't feel bad, Remy Tim. I fucking worked for those, yo. Later. Finally, you can be free to live a life you 